Aloha and welcome to Life Journaling for the 10th of March. The year is 2022. We're your hosts. I'm David. The affectionate Hana is sitting next to me. Our other golden retriever, Ollie's over there with Uvella. And today we're reading Deuteronomy chapters 13, 14, and 15, and also Galatians chapter 1. We're calling this one, and Uvella gives us the title, Let the Spirit Teach Me. And before we get into that, would you dare open us up in prayer? Thank you, Lord Jesus, for today. Thank you for your word. Thank you for helping us to have this opportunity, or for giving us this opportunity to share what we've read in your word uh, with others. We ask that you uh, help it to make a positive difference in their life. Amen. Amen. So explain yourself. Well, from Galatians 1, 17 through 18. And by the way, welcome to Tucson, Arizona. Oh, thank you. Um, it's not what I expected. Um, I did not go up to Jerusalem to see those who were the apostles before I was, but I went into Arabia. Later, I returned to Damascus, and after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to get acquainted with Cephas and stayed with him 15 days. My observation. Paul is telling about his conversion to Christianity. He tells us that after he accepted Jesus as his Lord and Savior, he did not immediately start preaching the gospel or go visit the apostles. He went to Arabia. I read a book about Paul's retreat to Arabia. The author mentions that according to Paul's testimony, Paul was advancing in his studies and Paul was a Pharisee. Paul knew by heart the Old Testament prophecies. When he went to Arabia, he was able to spend time alone with God and to study the words from the Old Testament and develop a firm foundation about Christ. He studied and understood the scriptures that predicted the coming birth of Christ, who Christ was according to the scriptures, why Christ died on the cross, and how people now had forgiveness of sin because of Christ. Paul's alone time with God rooted him in God, and from his time alone with God, Paul ended up writing 13 out of the 27 books in the New Testament. My application. I read a lot of Christian books and do research on the internet about scripture. However, I take what I read and ask God if it is correct. I compare what I read elsewhere and see if it aligns with the Bible. There is nothing wrong with Christian books and articles. However, to grow spiritually, you need the Word of God. If Paul, who spent time alone with God for three years, or spent time alone with God, and who did not go to the other Christians to learn about God, I can learn from his, ex from his example. Alone time with God in His Word is where I can learn about God. My prayer. Every day, I thank you for your word because it is so precious to me. I learn more and more about you and how much you love me. You give me nuggets of wisdom and show me how much you love me. Thank you for teaching me that your word is powerful, and it is only through spending time in your word that I can grow personally and grow closer to you. Amen. You speak about learning from others, and we talk about being mentored by scripture, contemporary leaders, and I think I talk about that today a little bit as well. But you have your PhD in education, so explain how we also learn when we teach others or share with others. How does that work? Well, as far as retaining information. Whenever you hear something, you only retain about 10% of it. And when you read and write, you only retain like 15 or 20 percent but when you teach somebody something when you retell it when you retell it or you reteach it and explain it to them then your retention is up to like 70 percent so would it be more if you shared it with two people <laughs> <laughs> no um i think the more maybe that you practice saying it it increases but um it to me though it's like if you told me all about um rvs right <laughs> i'm not gonna learn much about it and i'm not gonna get really into it but if i showed you how to put water in the battery no but if i 
myself went and looked and spent time with it, I would learn about it. And that's kind of like spending time with the Lord. I can read other books and they can tell me about Christ, but I'm not personally talking with him. And that's where the Bible comes in. Very good. Today I'm calling mine, Who Are We Trying to Please? It's a question from Galatians chapter 1, verse 10. Am I now trying to win the approval of human beings or of God? Or am I trying to please people? If I were still trying to please people, I would not be a servant of Christ. Observation. And that comes from who? Who was saying that? Paul. Paul. I, I, um, I'm learning because I've asked you and I'm repeating what we've, we've talked about. Observation. I love this documentation from Paul as he tells his story of coming to know God and of becoming a spokesperson for Jesus. In today's scripture reading, Paul explains he is not concerned about what people think as he's just trying to please God. My application. Okay, honest time here. When I was younger, I was a fan of God. I knew about God, you know, in name, but I was not a follower of God. I was seeking ways to make money and the next steps in my life, such as having friends and starting a family and to buy things to make more uh, enjoyable for my life. Like Paul, my eyes were opened and I feel I must share now what a different life I have. I want to encourage everyone there is hope. Don't try to please other people, including your own family or friends, as they may not be following God. It's true. As Paul writes, try to please God. Everyone needs to decide for themselves. Who are we trying to please? My prayer? Lord, thank you for mentors found in the Bible, as we mentioned, for contemporary mentors in books, in audio files, and on YouTube recordings and such. Help me to discern which are telling the truth about you so that I may draw closer to you and have a deeper relationship with you. May your words be my words when I speak and may they be my actions, your actions. Amen, Pastor David. Give me one example of how someone can please God instead of pleasing other people. Okay you please god when we first got into this journaling stuff this life journaling which is just a a manner in which we're reading through the bible once in a year for the old testament and twice for the new testament so i was a fan of christ but not a follower so miss uvella you would sit at the dining room table or on the couch or whatever and you would just journal and we can teach what we know, but we reproduce who we are. And you are doing that. And so you are having that personal relationship with Christ there in front of me in our house. And I saw the way you acted, and I wanted some of that. I wanted to use soap, as we now know, where we're reflecting on the scripture that stands out to us, the observation, the application of how we use it in our life, and then the prayer as well. So that's how, in real sense, you just modeled it for me. And um, then in time, I wanted that too. And God used you, not in words, but actions, for me to become a follower of Christ. So tomorrow, we're going to continue journaling. We're going to be looking at Deuteronomy chapter 16, 17, and 18. And also, we'll look at Galatians chapter 2, if you want to follow along with us. Did you mention on there Psalms 38? And Psalms 38. See, you're still helping me today. I'm going to close this in prayer. Father God, thank you for my helpmate. Thank you for all those helpmates all over the world. Thank you for uh, just guiding us and protecting us as we go about our daily walk with you. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen.